what is the major difference between survey grade, uh, also called resource grade, asset inventory grade, and survey grade is more of a mode difference in this example. The equipment I've got running here is that handheld I showed you outside. You know, it can be a standalone little unit to get the meter grade stuff, or it can be augmented by WAS or Beacon or uh, real time network to bring it up to the submeter, the subfoot, and the decimeter if it's into a real time network in the same kind of uh, VRS mode or, or other correction types, depending on how you set it up. In this example, though, it's got the same operating system as my survey data collector. It's Bluetoothed over to the same dual frequency receiver that I use when I'm surveying, and it's Bluetoothed over to the same cell phone I use as a modem to get it to a real-time network. What's the major difference? Here's the indicators up here. They may look a little more cartoonish in some of the mapping software, but uh, they do the same thing. It's more in the data end of it. That is the major difference here. The uh, mapping folks typically classify things into what GIS looks at as point features, linear features, and closed polygons. So someone could just collect a point feature with a single code, like we would in, in surveying, uh, you know, add uh, suffixes and things for line stringing. Or they can preset to collect a lot of additional attribute data. And this is very easily customizable. In this example, I'm going to uh, go out and inventory some catch basins. And we've got scroll boxes with codes for casting types, uh, inputs for heights, uh, the types, the street type, and even connecting over to uh, a camera to collect a photo with each. It's the depth of the attributes which sets uh, mapping apart doesn't mean it's any better or any worse. It's just a different way of doing things. Now, the discussions about who should or should not be doing this, this I'm not addressing that at all here. just want to let you know what the differences are and what people and equipment are capable of doing and encourage you to <laughs> go and take on some mapping jobs. Your clients are going to want it in a certain format and with a lot more attributes than your typical surveying. So... Uh, become, becoming an expert in it means we can have more of an inroads into it. I, I, I'm getting close to editorializing there. I shouldn't. So something else I'll show you here while I got this thing fired up is the single biggest point of failure in using an RTN is the communications. 90% of all the calls we get from RTN users struggling in the field is their their connection to the internet is not working, their cell phone, their Wi-Fi, their broadband card, their radio relay. You open up an Internet Explorer on your data collector, fire up a website, I call it the ESPN test, look at the day's scores, that means you're getting to the internet. Otherwise, if you can't knock on the door of the RTN, there's no way in the world it's going to send you corrections. So, a uh, little advice there, do, do your internet check uh, when you're first firing up. Mapping grade, resource grade, asset inventory, survey grade. Mapping grade was synonymous with a meter because in the days past it was code based. Uh, you know, your typical uh, Enviro intern with the little single frequency box on top of a pole or in a backpack, or maybe connecting to a beacon to get a meter, or post processing to get that. That's how it became synonymous. The whole, the whole equation changed when these units are, ca are now capable of getting much higher precisions. So happy surveying and maybe happy mapping. Thanks a lot. Bye.